Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolo Tech and iOS 17 beta 2 has been out for almost two weeks at this point. I've been using it full time on my 14 Pro Max and iPad Pro and wanted to share even more new features that have been found since the initial What's New video. We'll talk about that and also take a look at the YouTube community poll where there's over 11,000 votes at the time of this video and 211 comments. I've used all of those comments to figure out what iOS 17 beta 2 is like as well as iOS 16.6 beta four and iOS 16.5.1 in general, they're all much better than they used to be, but let's first talk about new features. Now, if we go into messages, this is a great new feature. We'll go into messages and send a voice message within messages. If we send a voice message, so we go to our menu on the left. Now go to audio. This is a new voice message on iOS 17 beta two. Now, if we send that message, if we press and hold on it, we can now save it to voice memos. So if we save it to voice memos, then go over to the voice memo app, it should show up here. So you'll see here, there's the voice memo and we can play it back here as well. Let me turn up the volume. This is a new voice message on iOS 17 beta two. So now you can save your voice messages that you've sent via message or via messages to the voice messages app. I think that's a great way to save those if you want to do that. Within iOS 17 beta two, if you're using the camera, there is a great new feature. Now I had to check this out for myself. And if we go into photos, I've saved a couple screenshots of it. You'll see here that this is a screenshot or a photo I took of a tag on a piece of clothing. If we tap on this, you'll see that it identifies it. And here it says laundry care. If we go to laundry care, it recognizes the symbols and then tells you what they are and gives links with more information. So you'll see here, we can go to that link and see more information about the laundry care of that particular garment. So that's really nice. They've also added the same feature for cars. So I went into my car, turned it on just so all the lights would show up. And again, it recognizes auto symbol tap on this and you'll see it says steering wheel, airbag, tire, and it's recognizing what the different symbols are. So that's something that is brand new. And again, it gives more information to each one of them from ISO.org. So that's a great update. If you found any more that it recognizes, let me know in the comments below. Also, if you scan a QR code now, it has an easier way to get to those links. So let me show you what I mean. So here we have a QR code on the Apple website. If we just bring our phone over the top of it, tap on it, it brings us directly to that website. It's much faster than before and a quicker way just to get right to whatever that QR code has. So that's a great update. The weather app gets an update and of course it's showing real time clouds and more, but if we go to maybe a place where it's nighttime, maybe over in Dubai right now, you'll see that it shows the moon. It tracks the moon phases throughout the background image. So that's been updated within the phone app. If we go to recents, they've now increased the limit from over 100 to some say 350 others say 500. Now I don't have that many recents, so it's hard to verify that. But if you actually have 350 plus, let me know in the comments below. I know this was a big complaint before as you could only see a hundred recents. Now you can see many more. If you're using the fitness app and your Apple watch to use one of the new cycle fitness workouts, if we go here, we'll go to workout. And then on our Apple watch, we'll just go to outdoor cycle, give it a second to go ready. There we go. There should be a new live activity that shows up on your iPhone, but you will have to have iOS 17 beta two, as well as watch OS 10 beta two installed. And you'll see it here. So we'll have that live activity and that will show up as long as you're using it. So you can use that along with your workout here. If you want a larger display while you're riding the bike, if we go into Safari and go to iCloud.com, you can now sign in with a pass key. If we go to sign in and you'll see, it says sign in with Apple, continue with password or sign in with iPhone. If we sign in with iPhone, it will give us the option for a QR code and the ability to sign in using a pass key. So that's something they've added to iCloud.com. Also within Safari, if you have 500 tabs open and you go to open another, it will now prompt you to close all of them or close one month's worth of tabs or just cancel out. That's the new limit. I rarely have over one or two tabs open, but if you've ever bumped into that limit, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Also, if we go into our settings and then go to our Safari settings, 
Then we go to our experimental features down at the bottom under advanced. They've actually changed the name here. So it's now called feature flags. It used to be experimental features and now it's feature flags. They've changed this on Mac OS as well. Now, if we go to set a wallpaper using a portrait, there's some new styles with gradient backdrop, seamless backdrop, seamless background mono, overprint and you'll see studio and some others that we've had before. So they've updated this a little bit with those new seamless background updates. So you can change the background if you want, change it to whatever shade you want and completely adjust it to whatever works for you. So if you want to change the background and you can do this with any portrait, it knows that it's a portrait and then changes the background. Now within Apple CarPlay, let's plug into our CarPlay device here. Give it a second to connect. Once it connects, there we go. If we go over, go into settings, then we go to wallpaper. There's some new wallpaper here. Now, before we had the iOS 17 wallpaper. Now we have a couple different changes here. So nothing huge, but there are a couple new wallpapers that look nice. And if you want to set those for your main background on CarPlay, you can. So you can see all the different options here with both light and dark mode. If we go into the mail app, and then we go and start typing and tap on our menu options here, tap the two A's. We now have options for default font, but they've actually categorized these a little bit differently. So if we go over to iOS 16.5.1, you'll see that it's organized a little differently. So they have sort of block sections over each letter. So it looks a little different. We also don't have the option to quickly scroll from A to Z and then the little hashtag or pound sign there. So just a little small change, but something they've updated within photos. If we go to share a photo, we now have a new option. Now this was actually here with beta one as well, but we have the option to export unmodified original. So we can now save that to our files. If we want to do that, that was there with beta one also there with beta one that I missed is in maps. If maybe you're routing somewhere, you've navigated to a different location. Sometimes you'll get a prompt to actually rate the route. So that's something new with iOS 17. Now, as far as anything else new, well, some people are reporting that Apple has actually fixed the camera with iOS 17, meaning that it no longer over sharpens the image and just looks better overall. So let me take a couple different photos. I'll take them using 16.5.1 and iOS 17 beta two, and then we'll compare both of them. And here we have the iPhone 12 pro max and 13 pro max. And let's take a photo of both. Now, just from what I can see here, it definitely seems like it's less sharp. And also the white balance seems to be more correct with iOS 17 beta two. Take a look at a couple other photos and let me know what you think. So what do you think of the photos here? I'm showing, do you think it looks better with iOS 17 compared to iOS 16.5.1? Let me know in the comments below. Now, as far as overall stability, iOS 16.5.1 has been pretty stable for most people, whether that's people within my family, they aren't complaining about any issues right now. And it just seems to be decent overall. However, people using iOS 16.6 beta four report that it's even better. So it looks like Apple's finally refining iOS 16 after all these months, but iOS 17 beta two seems to be really good with the exception of a few bugs here and there. There's still issues, but it's great for an early beta, probably the best early beta I've seen in many, many years, maybe with the exception of iOS 11. So it seems to be pretty good that way. However, there's still a few things worth mentioning. One of them is on the iPad and that's the health app. I'm not sure if you've seen this, but if we go over to the health app, wherever it is here, there it is. You can see that the heart within the health app isn't fully filled in. I'm not sure if this was just an icon that they didn't export properly into the beta build or something else, but it doesn't look right. It has a pattern there that shouldn't really be there. Also the copy and paste bug is back. So maybe you wanted to share a link to a video, one of my videos, for example, if we paste it here, oftentimes it would actually prompt you to allow you to paste again. So that bug is back. I thought it was just the initial time, but it seems to prompt me over and over. Music keeps crashing for me when I'm in Apple CarPlay. So maybe I'm playing a song, all of a sudden it will just crash out of nowhere and not work properly. Also the keyboard bug is there and very annoying. So if we go into maybe type, you can see here that the search bar just sort of disappears and there's now it went back. So there's definitely a glitch here and there. I see this in messages and everywhere else where you go to type and sometimes it just doesn't work. There's no search bar. I can't type the, the overall 
the keyboard stays on the screen as you saw there. There's a lot of different bugs with this. I've seen the MagSafe battery pack not working for some. Another issue is odd colors when going into Safari, sometimes especially on HDR video or photos. And there's an odd wallpaper bug when taking the phone off of standby, where sometimes it doesn't fill the full display. Additionally, the phone is not charging for some people when they plug it in. It's never been an issue for me, but some people say they have to restart their phone to get that to work. And also, if you're using the Apple savings account in Wallet, within the Wallet app, if you're using the savings account, sometimes you can't deposit money or remove money as well. There seems to be some issues with that, and sometimes Siri isn't working on AirPods for some people. So there's still quite a few issues, and you can see those issues within the feedback app wherever that went here, let's go into feedback. And within the feedback app, if we go to our notes for iOS 17 beta two, there we go. You can see there's a lot of different issues still. So if you are still having an issue and it's not listed here, be sure to report it in feedback as there's definitely some issues still happening with it. As far as the overall performance, well, it's still been pretty good. Other than the bugs I mentioned, the performance has been quite good. However, today, maybe it has to do with processing those photos I showed earlier. So if we go back here and then cancel, if we go to the photos where it was actually recognizing things within the different tags from clothing or different messages on a car, sometimes they actually seem to heat the phone up quite a bit. The phone was scalding hot after I took those photos. And in fact, just opening those photos has made it warmer. So there's definitely some weird heat issues going on. Not as bad as beta one for me, but definitely some issues going on. Now, as far as my battery life, I've shared that it's been going down quite a bit as far as battery health, and that's not too much of a concern for me as I'm on betas and the phone's almost a year old. But you'll see here I'm at 92% battery health and 223 cycles according to Coconut Battery. However, Coconut Battery is saying I have about 94% battery health, so I'm not sure what the accurate number is here. It could be that it's accurate on Coconut Battery or more accurate on iOS, but because it's a beta, it's hard to say. However, with all the extra heat from running this beta and all of the extra charging, maybe a couple times a day, I would recommend not installing iOS 17 beta two just yet on your main device. Not only will that cause additional battery wear, it's not too much of an issue to me as you can just replace the battery, but cycling the battery multiple times throughout the day, of course, is going to use up those battery cycles and reduce the battery health capacity overall. Not a big deal, but it's just the way batteries work. As far as overall battery life, let's take a look at today where I've had two hours and 11 minutes and used over 25% of my battery. If we take a look at yesterday, I actually had pretty decent battery life, six hours and 24 minutes of screen active time and used about 75% of my battery. It seems to be getting better, but the day before was terrible at two hours and 41 minutes. It seems to vary greatly depending on which day we're talking about. If you're curious about iOS 16.6 beta 4's battery life, it seems to be okay. Abhishek sent in his battery life on an iPhone 11 Pro Max at 95% battery health. And you'll see using 75% of his battery, he had four hours and 55 minutes of screen on time, 37 minutes of screen off time. You'll see Instagram was his main use of battery and typically meta apps seem to use a ton of battery. So depending on the day, this can vary, but generally it's a pretty good update as far as battery life goes. iOS 17 though seems to be lacking at this point. However, iOS 17 beta three should be just around the corner, probably sometime later next week. So next week we can expect iOS 17 beta three, most likely public beta one as well. Typically Apple releases it within the first week or so of July, and they've said to expect it in July. So usually around that time frame, you'll see that. And we can also expect iOS 16.6 beta five or release candidate. Last year we had iOS 15.6 beta five. So maybe we'll see that this year. So probably early in the week with the following day being the iOS 17 beta three release. And then of course, iOS 16.6 would release to the public sometime in July, typically with iOS 16.7 running all the way up until September when they release iOS 17 to the public. So lots to look forward to. I would expect more refinements with iOS 17 beta three in the public beta release. So hopefully we'll see some changes there and further refinements as iOS 17 seems to be getting better and better.
Now, as far as what you had to say in the YouTube community poll, let's take a look at that. So I thought we'd start with iOS 16.5.1. As I said, most people report it's quite good. And user Anthonodoro says literally zero bugs in 16.5.1. Really fast, stable, and battery life is great. And you'll see it there. It's still not showing correctly in iOS 17 beta 2. Alfredo Villanueva 365 says, Hi Aaron, currently I'm on iOS 16.5.1 on an iPhone 12 Pro Max. So far it's been great and stable, no bugs with my phone. I can easily get through a day with good battery life and I wouldn't really hesitate to upgrade to the public beta of iOS 17 just yet. I would hold off until the public release of iOS 17 until the end of September. Anyway, no complaint as of now. Thank you for your amazing content. Thank you. CO Salo one says loads of bugs on iOS 17 beta two keyboard, not displaying correctly. Videos, not playing correctly in browser Siri being unable to process requests, etc. I've lost 2% battery health in the last week, despite it being winter and always charging my phone face down with no cover and my phone only being four months old. However, battery life has improved from iOS 17 beta one. So there's that Jeremy Debo said iOS 17 on the 14 pro max battery is a little better than beta one performance has been good, but a few weird bugs keep happening. It's almost impossible to swipe multiple words in spotlight search. The words rearrange sometimes connecting AirPods after media is already playing, causing it causes a respring and the keyboard keeps covering the text fields more often. Other than that, it's been pretty good. Roy Barnes 7512 said using iOS 17 beta two and is pretty stable in my opinion. Battery life has been great. The only bug I'm experiencing is the different colors in Safari when it comes to certain pictures. And so that's everything with iOS 17 beta two expect iOS 17 beta three. Like I said, this coming week with new features, changes and updates, it should be much better as far as refinement, usually around beta three or four, it gets really much more stable and even better with battery life as they start to focus more on refining it. But let me know your experience with iOS 17 beta two, iOS 16.6 beta four, or iOS 16.5.1, depending on what you're running in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.